Welcome back. Today's episode of CCTV's News Bulletin is all about appearances. With, in our local report, Cyrano de Bergerac, who has never expressed his love for Roxane, as his large nose undermines his self-confidence. Then an interview on the mixer assessment factor. Is the glass half empty or half full? And how different is UK reach? So let's start with some sound bites from the seminar on UK. Hi Angelo, can you share some highlights of the UK REACH seminar? We had a very interesting morning with speakers including regulators and industry representatives. The regulators elaborated on the steps that have been taken so far to transform uh, EU REACH into UK REACH. And despite the fact that there are many similarities in the content, um, the process to get to this content is largely different. A representative from the industry um, spoke about the um, experience that the industry has with UK REACH so far and she uh, explained that uh, one of the things they found is that there's a low level of uh, formation of and uh, negotiations in substance group yet. On data sharing, uh, it was concluded that negotiations still need to be held about uh, this, this data sharing and that the outcomes of these no negotiations are uh, uns uncertain. Uh, in the second part of the, sem of the seminar, um, the speakers talked about the global regulatory landscape on cosmetics and food contact, and then uh, it was zoomed in on the situation in the UK. We can conclude UK REACH is still in flux. So, will it remain a copy of EU REACH? Appearances can be deceiving. As stated, today's episode is all about appearances, so time to go back to our local reporters. Let's call them Cyrano and Roxane, who are at the location of yesterday's welcome reception. We are watching handsome Christian and eloquent Cyrano trying to seduce Roxane. Did you mention doubt? Why do your words come so haltingly out? Tonight you hesitate so strangely. Why? I, uh, uh, <coughs> Good question! Each question grows through the darkness of your life. If really so, my words would live just like yours. Since your words yield, the gravity mind have to rise to have to fight it. Am I so far above you still? So far I feel that one word could kill, crushing my heart like a stone. Then I'll come down to see you. No. And cut! If a man says no, it means no. But what you can see is what happened in College Garden during yesterday's evening's welcome reception, supported by Royal Haskoning DHV. Their London office is overlooking Westminster Abbey's College Garden. Throughout the evening, delegates could enjoy typical British summertime picnic favourites while enjoying views of the Victoria Tower, a tower that's part of the Palace of Westminster, where important decisions have been made like Brexit, resulting among others in UK reach, and of course wonderful views of the Abbey. This magnificent and world-famous building is England's most important church and has been the site of every coronation since William the Conqueror in 1066. It was here more than 70 years ago on June 2, 1953, that Queen Elizabeth II was crowned. Her well-deserved Platinum Jubilee was celebrated here in London earlier this month. We might not have had the chance to celebrate our Silver Chemcon Conference Jubilee last year, but there's always a silver lining. During probably Chemcon Asia 2026, we can drink a cocktail and toast on our Pearl Jubilee. A cocktail very appropriate for today's interview, with Peter Corritar and Arndt Weyers discussing the mixture assessment factor approach. Can this be generic or should this be pragmatic? The mixture assessment factor approach is part of the toxic-free roadmap of the chemical strategy for sustainability. Can you explain why the mixture assessment factor is considered and what it aims to achieve? As you may know, the EU has a comprehensive set of the chemical legislation uh, to protect the human health and the environment. And this legislation is designed to, to address the concern from the individual chemicals and from intentional mixtures like cosmetics, detergents or the products of the everyday use. However, you and me and all of us are uh, exposed not to one chemical or to one intentional mixture. And our legislation is not uh, at the moment uh, adequately equipped to deal with such, a, uh, such a unintentional exposures. 
So what we are trying to achieve is introduce a mixture assessment factor in REACH is to address unintentional co-exposure at the moment when the assessment of individual substances is done, even though we don't know the real co-exposures and we don't know enough about the toxicities uh, of the other co-exposed substances. Arndt, several decision makers and regulatory authorities seem to be reaching consensus that the MAF is indeed a reasonable and useful approach. What will be the impact of MAF on industry, like yourself, and consumers? Well, we have several studies from uh, CEFIC and CEFIC members that show uh, a high impact on both the uh, companies who register substances, but subsequently also, of course, the consumers who want to use the substances in, in the end, uh, with a very unclear situation about the environmental benefit. I think the, the important point is to understand that uh, if you if you use a tiered approach in risk assessment, as you do under REACH, you make very conservative assumptions in the first assessment, and then um, you um, use this as a filter to filter out cases of low concern. That is not the same as identifying substances of high concern. Therefore, if you take these, uh, say, super worst case assumptions in a, in a simple uh, REACH risk assessment that makes correctly to filter out the cases of low concern, um, makes assumptions uh, that are very conservative. If you then add all of them up, then you end up with, a, with an unrealistic scenario. Please watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel. After a pub crawl, it's always nice to eat something. So let's go back to our local reporters who are currently at London's Borough Market. It's one of the largest and oldest food markets in London, dating back to at least the 12th century. Hi there. I suggest, Francesca and Adris, that you sing part of a song from Cyrano the Musical, the part where the innkeeper Ragano sings about poetry and pastry. At the same time, we will show some parts of the beautiful Borough Market and its tasty treats. Poetry enriched with rhyme, there never was a more delicious thing. Take a fresh papita roll with chocolate sauce upon it. How would you compare that to a Shakespeare sonnet? Pastry and poetry so thrill me I can't get my fill. Garden peas are sure to please. Presented by a Yes, garden peas, especially the mushy ones, go well with fish and chips. And there's probably nothing more British than fish and chips. Can you tell us more about this traditional British dish? Freshly cooked, piping hot fish and chips, smothered in salt and doused with vinegar. It simply cannot be beaten. Do you know when and where this British dish first originated on our menu? Most people actually think it originated in England, but it's not true. The history of fish and chips can be traced all the way back to the 15th century in Portugal. In 1839, Charles Dickens referred to it as a fried fish warehouse in his novel Oliver Twist. London stakes the claim as one of the first in England to serve this famous meal, along with potatoes from the New World in the 17th century. Thanks. Enjoy your fish and chips and borrow market. Also at Campbell Europe 2022, we have a market with delicious food and, of course, many exhibitors that try to seduce you. I recommend visiting these exhibitors during the week to collect stickers. Collect all stickers and enter our prize draw to win one of the generous gifts from our exhibitors. Maybe an alarm clock? Let's go to the statement of the day, which is all about a wake-up call for industry and authorities. Next to me, Jerke Lichthart of Chemsec. Hi, Jerke. Hi. Jerke, tell us what Chemsec is doing and trying to achieve. The ultimate goal of Chemsec is try to reduce the use of hazardous chemicals. We're empowering industry with our tools to become better in their chemicals management. We also have strong chemicals criteria where they are matched against the peers in the chemical industry. We also enlighten the regulators for them to see what is happening in industry. Because a lot of companies, they are not waiting for regulation to happen. They are acting already now. And your statement is? Industry has to be transparent now. Thank you for your statement. Wake up calls are important. So your presentation is scheduled in the last session of the day on advocacy and other impacts on the value chain. But we start today with two sessions on the chemical strategy for sustainability, focusing on the CSS roadmap and enforcement and CSS implementation and innovation agenda, like safe and sustainable by design. 
In the afternoon, another significant session on the EU retrovision and polymers. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.